Malnutrition is never a pretty picture. In poor countries, young children are most vulnerable. Your contribution to CARE helps change that picture. Send your check or money order to CARE, Box 576, New York 10016, or local CARE office. Fifteen years ago, when a child got leukemia, it was a death sentence. But things have changed. Children who once lived only months are now living years. Many of them get to grow up. Some are even being saved. Ever wonder what the American Cancer Society did with your money? Part of it went to leukemia research. And if we had more, we could do more. This is CBS. Good evening. China's Deng Xiaoping prepares to leave the United States tonight, but it's been a busy and an important week for him and for the United States as well. Ayatollah Khomeini is still calling for an end to the government of Shapul Bakhtiar, and Mike McKnight will show us how bills are passed through the legislature. These stories and more coming up next on Action News tonight. I'm on my own again, a little out of practice at handling things by myself and knowing that one out of six American women is like me, single, head of household, isn't much comfort right now. Do I have to establish credit on my own? What if I need a loan? I guess it's me against the world. You're not alone. You can turn to American National Bank for credit advice, financial and loan counseling. American National Bank. Help when you need it most. When you help start a scout troop, there's no guarantee one of the boys will grow up to hit 755 home runs. But you never know. Call Boy Scouts of America. Enjoy Phil Silvers as Sergeant Bilko tonight at 10.30. America's leading news station. This is your update of the news tonight with Jan Rasmussen, Frank Bramhall with AccuWeather, and Dave Weber with sports. This is Action News Tonight. Good evening and welcome to the Weekend Action News. I'm Jan Rasmussen. It was rainy today in Seattle where Chinese Vice Premier Deng Xiaoping spent his last full day in the United States. Officials say he had a mild case of the sniffles. Nevertheless, his mood was cheery as Deng toasted Washington State business leaders and toured the Boeing plant to watch the production of airplanes. But what a week it's been for the small but mighty man who represents so many people back home in China. We introduced him to the Harlem Globetrotters, we fed him barbecue, and we showed him how to make a car 50 times faster than the Chinese can. On this, the eve of Deng Xiaoping's departure from the United States, Richard Threlkel takes a look at what his trip has meant to him and his country and to us. We've been watching the comings and goings of Deng Xiaoping all week, and it strikes you what a fascinating time Deng Xiaoping must be having watching us. Because if you've noticed, America has been making a terrible show-off of itself. America has been saying, hey, look at me, ever since Deng Xiaoping got here. Jimmy Carter got a chance to show off. Presidents need to be seen making important friends and being statesmanlike. It's the sort of work presidents are supposed to do. Congress got a chance to show off, too. Richard Nixon got a chance to show up. The space agency, which nobody's paid much attention to since we stopped putting men on the moon, got a chance to show off. And the captains of American business, who have been lusting after Deng Xiaoping as if he were some long-lost rich uncle who'd just blown into town and was thinking of changing his will, were showing off. Even though in an interview in Time magazine, Mr. Deng allowed us how he thought America had made a poor friend in China. By that, he said, he didn't mean a bad friend, just a friend who is broke. Nevertheless, we entertained him like a prodigal son, a blowout at the Kennedy Center, for example. And you had to wonder, while you watched him watch America strut its stuff, what was Mr. Dung thinking? What is he really going to say to the comrades back in Peking when they finally get back together over a quiet Mao Tai? But in the process of putting on airs for him this week, a couple of things happened. 
Roundup Rodeo. For one thing, we got to take a pretty good look at Deng Xiaoping. He said he is just a country boy, and he did charm a lot of people with his down-home good humor. But like a lot of country boys, underneath, he is a tough, smart city slicker. The White House wanted him to say a few nice things about the Americans and just let it go at that. Mr. Dong wanted to say some awful things about the Russians, so he did, every chance he got. <laughs> Of course, some people are displeased and even regard the establishment of Sino-U.S. diplomatic relations as a threat to themselves. If this event could be described as a threat, it can only be a threat to hegemonists. For another thing, we got to take a pretty good look at ourselves. We learned, if we needed reminding, that Deng Xiaoping was right. We are rich in those things in which his nation is poor just now. And not just dollars and cents things. Things like human freedom and dignity and the rights of free speech and peaceful assembly and other truths we hold self-evident. You could see that in America this past week. And you could see we don't have to show off for anybody, really, except it is nice once in a while, as this past week, to show off for ourselves.